Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers. On this episode of Transmissions, Optimus Prime's Ion Blaster shows up as a Kickstarter project. Make Toys takes a stab at Jetfire and we see the first official look at masterpiece movie Bumblebee. Today is Wednesday, September 19th, 2018, and this is episode 295 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that knew once Charles left for Germany, all the Ollies would get Trypticon in again. I'm your host, Jeremy, a.k.a. Yako, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team, Yusuf, better known as Yoshi. Yo! And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hey. How's it going? Let's talk Transformers. All right. We are starting with donations, as we always do, but there are there is no new donation this week. Bullshit. Are you fucking kidding me? Just because Charles isn't here, we haven't had one fucking donator. Are you fucking serious? They love Charles that much. People come for the voice. God damn it. You mean this voice? No. No. Hello. No. How are you? I am here to collect God all the damn do- it, Yoshi. Daryl. <laughs> well, it was <laughs> Russian Yoshi. <laughs> I am here to collect oh. all the all the dues that you are due to me. You okay. do you need to pay. I for, will pay you everything. Shut service. down your Twitter account. <laughs> okay, but we do have something with re- regards to our donations. Um, we were invited to participate in a trial with Patreon for a new offering that they have called special offers. So we are doing a time limited special offer. Anyone that that donates on our Patreon before September thirtieth at the ten dollar level is going to get something special. And anyone already at that level, you're going to get it too. We know that it's hard to get to conventions. We also know it's hard for get to get all of us at the same convention. So we're going to send Daryl to you. <laughs> I'm fine with that. That would be nice, but no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so at conventions we've been giving out for the last little while these little pins with our kind of our caricature from the logo that k girl the awesome k girl did for the special offer anyone that is at the ten dollar level as of september 30th is going to get a full set of some limited edition pins this is all five they they are a little smaller than the no- normal ones are, we've been given out in the past but you're going to get charles daryl Yoshi, myself, and the elusive editor, Mike. Ooh. So this is something we were wanting to just try just to see how it works. And I just, you know, I thought it would be fun. And then if you are coming to TFCon, let us know. And we would be happy to just bring it there rather than shipping it. And DJ Ronan is asking in Discord if there's a Russian Yoshi one. No, there will never be a Russian Yoshi one. But I am such a big part of the show. Unfortunately. Exa- wow. <laughs> God. But, but let's move on. We, we have... Does Siberian Tiger have your tongue? <laughs> <laughs> How? How do you do that? How do you just know what to say? Well, if Daryl could God. come back and talk about our contest, that would also be something that is a benefit to all of our Donatrions. Sure, let, let me get him. All right, we got a contest going on here. That's and... the worst Canadian accent I've ever heard. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, we have a contest for our Donatrions, and it is running until September the 30th. For those of you in the uh, Americas uh, that are having a hard time finding the G1 reissue figures, I know that they're starting to show up nice and slow there, but uh, we have gone and gathered all of the important ones anyway, and uh, you can, uh, you can win them here on the show. So if you are a Donatrion by September the 30th, you are entered in our reissue contest. Uh, This is a, I believe Yoshi has named it the, you don't have to go to Walmart contest. (laughs) And, uh, and that, uh, that is all, all by itself. Yep, it just rolls off the tongue. It's so nice. The contest will be three separate drawings. You can win a G1 reissue Starscream, 
a reissued Devastator and a reissued Bumblebee. And they are going to be uh, drawn in the first drawing for, well, it will be uh, October. The first uh, show in October, I think, is what we've decided. Make sure you're a Donatrion by the end of September and you will be entered in that. And if you are at the duly appointed level, that is the $10 level that it gets you qualified for that special op- offer Jeremy just mentioned. Uh, you will be entered twice. You get two entries. So make it happen. Get yourself some cool stuff. And one, one more thing before we get into our toy news, we uh, had a new shirt designed by uh, Mike a, a few months ago, the, the tape man t-shirt. And since it's starting to get a little cooler, although, I mean, it was like 86 degrees today, but in, in theory, fall is here. We have put that design on some sweatshirts, some hoodies, and a long sleeve t-shirt. If you wanted that, go check our, our store, the store link on our website. If you are a Donatrion supporter, you have a link to a store that gets you 20% off. Essentially, we get nothing from that sale. And we have a new design that I came up with. Why would you promote that link? Because they give us money. So they already give us money. But we might we be able to milk them for more, Jeremy. <laughs> um, but anyway. Shit, are we, we live? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we have we have another shirt, and I'm going to post a link to a picture of that in our Discord so people can see it. It's it's kind of in the style of, of a college um, where you, you have, like, the college name in there. Here they were established. This is says Transmissions Podcast, established 2013, and it, it has the appearance of a rub sign in the middle. Jeez, I wonder who designed this one. I just said I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is hey, something. DJ Ronan wants it in a thong. No. No. You would have to just pirate it, do it yourself. This is just, it, it's a, a fun design I wanted to come up with. So we have other options. If you like it, buy it. It's great. Show everyone you went to a really shitty college. <laughs> What was that movie, the Southampton um, Institute of Technology? <laughs> I have no idea. Which their tagline is shit. Anyways, yeah. Oh. Uh, what, what our what our audience didn't hear was uh, how much, uh, at least I was praising how beautiful that this new design is. Like, I really do dig it. Yeah, I think it came together pretty well. Yeah, it did. You did a good job. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, any degrees by this university, they're they're useless. You can't use them anywhere. I can't wait for all the people to come up and rub my chest. That, that's my big fear with this is th- if you see someone in this, do not rub their chest. Unless it's me. I like human contact. That's th- this is one of the reasons that I made the rub sign have the, the appearance of something. Because originally I was going to have it just be all black. I'm thinking that might be bad. I do not Currently want. Currently we have not designed a female version of yeah, this. No, there's a female version of the shirt. Too, oh, here. shit, Jeremy, take it down. We don't want a lawsuit. We don't want people rubbing the chest. So, Jeremy, it's Mike. You're going to have to fix this. Yes, you are. Anyway, you missed the joke. That's not my fault. Oh, no, no. We, it's not we my got fault. The it wasn't joke. funny. <laughs> oh. It was a bad joke. So with all of that stuff out of the way, let's move on to toy news. We have got some images of the Make Toys Cross Dimensions Buster Skywing. It's their figure MTCD-5, and it is a very stylized version of Jetfire. And it looks pretty badass, actually. It, I don't see Jetfire when I look at this. I see some kind of really cool mech, but all in all, it looks pretty cool. Also in the images, you they did a um, like a Nemesis version. It's a black repaint. It's a cool looking figure. It transforms into what a lot of people have said looks like a Quinjet. And I mean, I, I remember making say that. Yeah, it makes we've made that comparison when we first saw the, the cat images. But this thing, it looks very cool. The black version definitely looks like a, an Avengers Quinjet. Like I said, I don't really see Jetfire when I when I see it. It's I mean, it's got the right color palette, but um, the head does definitely not look like Jetfire. But, uh, I mean, hey, it's Cross Dimensions. It's super stylized. That's the whole point of Cross Dimensions. Let's open it up. J- uh, Jeremy, what do you think of uh, Buster Skywing here? I like it. Um, I I think I like the Nemesis version better. I just think the, the colors work a lot better. I mean, you know, like you said, it, it 
doesn't really look that much like uh, Jetfire. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe in, in plain mode with the two big jets on the back, but just as a figure itself, I think this looks really impressive. And I think just the, the Nemesis version just looks really sweet. And having like that crossover with the Quinjet looking vehicle mode, I just, I think it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yoshi, you had some thoughts? Um, so, uh, some thoughts? Yeah, it kind of echoes what you guys have to say. Like, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time extrapolating the, the, the jet fire in this. I, 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 like what you said, I feel like it's pulling more from a mech than it is a transformer. Um, I, I applaud them for wanting to tackle this, and uh, I, I think more third-party companies need to tackle this and come up with a visual style that's awesome. I just don't think this is it. All right, and I do have one more thing that I wanted to t discuss, and that is uh, Dr. Wu has produced an add-on kit for, um, this is the uh, studio series Grimlock. So this is, I believe he's a leader class figure, and uh, so he's already pretty mighty, um, but they have produced a battle spear for him. Um, so this kind of goes along with what the Age of Extinction figure had, although I believe it was his tail in the transformation of that figure. Um, anyway, this is uh, going along with that figure, and it kind of completes the look. Um, it's the DW-M16, and uh, yeah, it uh, doesn't appear that it is actually up yet. Anyway, it's going to be fairly inexpensive. Most of these things are. So keep your eyes open if you're interested in this. Um, personally, it's not a big thing whether or not this guy came with his, you know, big badass beat stick. He kind of looks better with it. Uh, it gives him something to hold in his hands. Jeremy, do you have, uh, would, would you want this for this figure if you had it? Or would you be fine if it didn't have it? Uh, I'm, I'm fine without it. I mean, one of my biggest issues I see with this is that big purple one none of the figures really have that much color to them. So it just stands out and I mean, it doesn't look like it goes with it. Yeah. The other one, I mean, it kind of fits the toy, but it might just be that I just don't really like the design of the, the Grimlock. Sure. And uh, Yoshi, any thoughts on this one? You know, to me, it seems like if you're a fan of the movie verse stuff and you've got you've got this figure, the, this is kind of a no brainer. It it looks good. I mean, it's it's one add on piece. It's uh, they spent a whole lot of time on it just from looking at it. And if uh, if this is where you're collecting, I I would think you would want this. Cool. All right, a couple quick and easy things to talk about this week from me, uh, Jeremy. Did you find anything? Yep, I have our first look at the packages of the new siege or war for cybertron siege figures we have the lionizer and blowpipe as well as the fire drive and these are basically all the the target master um little figures uh, lionizer is kind of a, a lion looking cat that turns into a a sword and blowpipe and fire drive are both um they both turn into guns uh, and one of the neat things about it was like some of the little effects like the there's an effect for the the sword that looks like it's swinging there's some explosion looking effects and all those will be able to attach to the larger figures but i i just think the package art itself I was telling Daryl before the show, I think it really kind of has that chaotic feel of a, a war or a battle scene. And I just, I, I think the package art itself is, is done extremely well. It sets it apart from what they've previously done with the power of the primes. Um, they've like moved, moved some of the elements around. So if you're seeing it on the shelf, you'd see that this is something distinctly different. So, um, Yoshi, what what are your thoughts on these three? I I wonder, like, because we're looking at some potato quality photos here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the photos themselves are bad. Yeah, they're absolute shite. But I wonder if it's because of the crappy photos or it's the art. But 
just to follow up on what you said, it looks like it's so heavily textured. It might actually be dark and, and muddy on the, on the store shelf. I don't, I don't know. I would, I would think that wouldn't happen, but I'm certainly getting that impression from them. You know, as far as these guys go, these are, you know, this is like, I like these little guys. Uh, I think they're probably a big selling point for Hasbro, but I always, I still think they're way too expensive for what they are. Yeah, I mean, I imagine they're they're taking the place of the Titan Master. Yeah, yeah, the... yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, we get in this size coming out down the line, because uh, none of these are 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 piquing my interest. But I I like the idea of them. Like, I think I think there's mm-hmm. a solid idea here that they just need to keep pushing forward. All right, but Daryl, I I think they look great. Um, I'm particularly interested in getting Blowpipe because he's a uh, the Target Master for trigger happy that came out uh, in uh, titan's return he's uh <clears throat> but i like the idea that they're going to do target masters now uh that's something that definitely fits in with this size class and can be used on a wide range of figures mm-hmm. that uh, have come out in previous years and i love the idea of the blast effects and the all that kind of stuff is is parts for me for other things that's fantastic if you needed uh, a few more, you know, gunshot effects. You could buy a couple fire drives, right? You know, they're they're they might be expensive for what they are, but it's, they're a lot cheaper than having to go out and and kind of find more of these things. It's just it's an easy way to get the 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 effect parts that you want. So I, yeah. I have no problem with with the price point on these. They're they're not that expensive. Yeah, it would be nice if they sold like just the blast effects by themselves but that would okay. no it's not going to happen no well moving on we have also takara has put out the official images for a number of the the first wave of these titans return or these <laughs> these war for cybertron siege um products as well as power of the primes punch counter punch which is shipping now we've talked about that in recent weeks so um we, in here, we see basically the entire first wave. We we see the three we just talked about: fire drive, lionizer. Looks like oh wait, we don't have no blowpipe in there. Yeah, no blowpipe. We have road handler and swindler, sideswipe, cog, optimus prime, ultra magnus, and like I said, punch counter punch. Uh, one of the things I wanted to to bring up, and uh, if you have anything that that sticks out you know, bringing up, but the, um, side swipe, I, I was thinking that when we first saw the pictures that Optimus Prime and side swipe were fairly generic, but looking at these pictures, the, the side swipe car actually looks really good. Then seeing what you can do with it, like with, when you see them loaded up with all the different pieces of cog as weapons, or at one point they have, um, basically he's wearing some pieces of cog as, as shoes. I, I think this line has extreme play value in it. It looks like the the character, like Sideswipe, is plenty poseable in robot mode. He just evokes your typical G1 Prime. My biggest issue with this, and you can see a close-up with an Optimus picture, is the kind of battle damage paint that, that they're putting on these. It just it looks messy to me. And I think that the figures would be would be better without it. Yoshi, do you have anything here that just stands out that that you you like or don't like? Fuck, dude, you're making me feel so old. I don't want my toys to look like they've been played with. Just like I don't want my jeans to have worn I, spots. No, or I, I want my toys to not look like someone just threw mud at it. Yeah, that's like, kind of what this looks like. Uh, like I, just, I, I, I can do that myself. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I I don't get it. I, I don't guess, but you know, it's one thing if you want to custom paint it and do a good job of it. I don't right. need this half-assed Hasbro on it. So yeah, uh, points dung for that, but uh, dinged. Uh, you know, slide sideswipe's interesting, man. This has got this to me has got a very G one feel to it until it's in all mode. Fuck, it kind of works. <laughs> yeah, so it. Kind of works. Uh, it, it doesn't look like an Earth vehicle like Optimus does. Right. Optimus, man, it's, they're so close with Optimus to make him look like something I'd give a shit about. 
But even if he did, even if he did look like somebody I gave a shit about, they crapped all over him by making him look like he was battle damaged. So, yeah. Um, it's nice to see what's coming. It's nice to see uh, see these guys kind of posed out and and what have you. Um, if I buy one right now, it's probably Sideswipe. I, I'm not going to... Don't hold me to that. But uh, we'll see what happens when I see it on the store shelf. All right. Yeah, and I will say also Ultra Magnus is looking amazing. So the, the two the two hits that I see from the line right now are Sideswipe and Magnus. Although the just the, the battle damage paint on Magnus's chest is just horrible. It it would be nice to to have a podcast someone could listen to to learn about dealing with things like that on their toys. Oh yeah, it, it, it's called Declassified Number Twelve. You should check it out. I've been looking at them and, and wondering whether uh, you could clean it off. And it looks like, I mean, yeah, it's it's likely paint that you could probably clean off, but you'd have to be careful whether it's paint on paint or, or uh, because if you did, then then you're screwed. But if uh, if it's just paint on on colored plastic, then you're likely good enough to to clean it off. Um, yeah, Peter uh, Ronan says it looks like it's mostly on paint and plastic. So yeah, he says rubbing alcohol can do it. Likely. Uh, yeah. 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 I would, I would definitely give it a shot. Um, Sideswipe doesn't actually look like he's got any on him. Um, unless there's, well, there's someone his toes there. Yeah. There's someone on the toes, but there's, it's, he looks fairly untouched, which is okay. I'm not a fan of the, uh, the weather, weather look either. Um, it, uh, it, it just looks messy. I just remember the, um, the squeaks toy when I saw it in the stores, it literally just looked like some some kid's fingerprints had just kind of put been dabbed in some some bronze paint or something like that and just kind of streaked along the figure. I'm like, this just looks bad. And I feel bad for the kid who's got a brown hand at the factory now. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I do I I love the picture of the armored up side swipe. That looks so fun. You know, just they just need to do a G2 version. <laughs> yeah really um but i i am in love with this cog figure this is just he's just guns on top of guns and he can break up and be part of every single figure and sideswipe can wear him as as like shoulder cannons and it just looks like such a good time i i like these figures there's a couple of them here that you know, yeah, they're not Cybertronian enough or whatever. Optimus Prime looks kind of g- generic, and and yeah, we've talked about all of it before. But yeah, it looks it looks like there's going to be some really good figures in this line. And uh, but the the paint stuff, um, I I might pick up one or two of them just to try. I don't I don't know whether I can stop myself from buying an Optimus Prime, so I might I might try it on the Optimus. But you, Yoshi and and you are right. The sideswipe. These are really good pictures, and that alt mode is sexy as fuck. What What do you think about the um, the smaller interior white Optimus in in Magnus? How I mean, it you can tell it, it looks like Optimus, you know, mm-hmm. like the original G one, you know, figure did, but it it is distinctly different from the Optimus Prime toy we see here. Oh, of course, yeah. If you look at pictures twenty four and twenty eight the dirty fucking shins on him are a real distraction. I like the, the, the silhouette that it gives off. I think it looks, it looks cool. It does. It reminds me a lot of G one ultra Magnus and his inner cab because he was kind of a, you know, a chesty kind of figure with very stubby legs that just kind of barely held him up. You know, that's really all that G one Optimus prime was, but they've done a lot with this figure. The, um, I wish that the grill wasn't also translucent blue. Um, you know, if I were to buy this figure, I might use a chrome pen on on that uh, on that area just to kind of dis- differentiate it from the rest of the window. All in all, I think it's a cool looking figure. Well, that is all I have. So Yoshi, why don't you uh, take us home? What do you got? MPM07. This is movie masterpiece Bumblebee from the upcoming movie. Uh, this first link here, we're looking at some very, very beautifully taken uh, shots of every aspect of this figure. I think these are some of the best uh, uh, promotional pictures we've seen for a masterpiece in a while. Right off the bat, I'm not, I'm not too 
ecstatic about the paint job on uh, on this Bumblebee. This, again, fits into the old man scenario of I don't want my toys to look like they've been played with before I bought them. But uh, I, we're seeing we're seeing the uh, the accessories this guy comes with. We're seeing uh, some posability here. You know, it's it's a masterpiece figure. We're getting you're getting what you pay for here. Uh, very much a sophisticated uh, action figure. How does it look to you, Jeremy? I, I think it looks good. It, you get your battle mask where you get the kind of B look, and then just the normal face in there as well. You get the sword and a blaster. I'm not sure why Bumblebee needs to have chest missiles, but he has like a hidden chest missile compartment. I'm like, that's not Bumblebee character. Nothing about this is really Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, in terms of you know, we we already have a we already have a Volkswagen Beetle turning into G1 Bumblebee, and it's it's really neat to see them take the same car and make it look into this guy. And yeah, just, you know. The the engineering that went into this is really amazing. You know, I'm I'm looking at it now in bot mode, Daryl, and I can see how that paint job on the car benefits it uh, in bot mode. But but in alt mode, I'm not too thrilled with it. Take a look at the paint job on this thing, and then go back to the the the, the siege figures. I mean. No, no, I yeah, this yeah. is a this is a, higher this is quality a step thing. up, yeah. a way bigger step up on weathering. So, um, they're trying to evoke the fact that this car is from 1974, I think, right? And it's a piece of shit. <laughs> so they're not giving you a brand new looking Volkswagen Beetle, and I can I can give them that. I want to applaud them for trying, and it, I think it looks half decent. The uh, the picture on the box is shopped, and, and it looks way better than the actual product. But uh, you expect that. I, I don't mind the the attempt here. I wish it was a little bit more uniformed along along the uh, the the car's you know side. But I don't I don't really fault them too much for trying. This is a, a movie figure. The movie the car in the movie is going to be a piece of shit, and the they wanted to to make it look like the car that they were making a movie figure, a movie masterpiece figure was going to be a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. And, and I can give them that. I got, you know, I have no problem with them trying. I like the fact that um, I can have two Volkswagen Beetles masterpiece scaled, uh, you know, sit next to each other. And in robot mode, they look entirely different. Uh, I find that incredibly interesting how the the engineering on that is going to work. They really should have had a picture of, both of those really that's the comparison that i would have made does the does the g1 masterpiece have rubber tires i can't remember no. i don't think so okay yeah they haven't done rubber tires on masterpiece for quite a time but all in all i think it's a, it's a really good figure it's it's a nice attempt it's it's big like it's way bigger than i thought it was going to be bumblebee in the movies is not some tiny pipsqueak he's he's a he's a full-fledged member of the team right so who can't talk. Right. So, yeah, no, I like it. I think it's cool. I doubt I'll pick it up, but I, I sure would like to to check it out and mess with it. Cool. I want to share the second link uh, we found. This has got a uh, video of uh, a stop motion animation, kind of just promoting the, uh, promoting the masterpiece figure, but also does a fantastic job of showing you how it transforms and how poseable it is. I, for one, hope they keep doing this because this was this was fun and entertaining, and it, it just shows you what you're getting for your money. What it doesn't say anywhere on the box that I'm seeing, Daryl, is that it's not actually not sentient. So I fully expect when we buy this for it to transform itself and play and entertain itself. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm I want mine to be able to do the moonwalk. Sure. Right. Well, I want my eyes to give me that death glow stare. Hmm. I love this this little uh, movie that they did. Um, it's fantastic, and uh, the little like boxing sequence he does, like the the duck and move and and, and duck and punch or whatever that yeah. he does, is just it's you know the the fact that the figure will do that is fantastic. Yeah, um, no, I, I tease, but I, it really is a, a nice thing that they did, and I hope they continue it. Well, yeah, and it's a nice little touch to the movie, uh, being that Travis Knight. Uh, Kubo and the Two Strings was all stop motion. It was mm-hmm. not computer animated. Oh. Yeah, that so might that, actually that's have a nice little to touch the fact did. that he did this. 
<laughs> yeah. No, that's cool. Oh, and this, I, this says that this commercial is from his studio. So there you go. Yeah. yeah it's connected. Cool. So we won't see this anymore outside this movie. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, this is amazing. Like people that can do high quality stop motion stuff like this. It's just, they are so talented. People who have the patience to do high quality stop motion shit quality, like that. Yeah. Are talented. All right. We've come to the Feast of Resistance. The thing I'm really stoked about. There is a Kickstarter project out there, everybody called Ion Blaster Commander, which is a person scaled Optimus Prime blaster rifle. Uh, I don't even know where to start with this, so I'm just going to start blabbering. This motherfucker comes in about four or five different options, uh, but the gist of it is, is you get a a scaled, uh, a a life size, a person scaled uh, blaster that you can use in a cosplay, have on display. Should the Kickstarter get funded, you get the blaster, you get a stand for it. Uh, you get a carrying case for it. And then there are other little bells and whistles, depending on how much you want to throw down for this guy. Looking at the the high end, it's, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, it's in uh, it's not in American monies, but uh, I believe it was a little over 400 bucks. Uh, it was a little over 400 bucks for the premium model. And then an additional estimated, this is very important, estimated 130 to get it shipped to you in the United States. But you have, the whole thing lights up. You can get uh, battle damage on it or wear damage, wear, wear marks on it, which I thought looked really good after I just fucking was talking about how I don't want my toys to look like they're worn out. <laughs> uh, so there's the hypocrite and Yoshi, everybody. So I really like that. But if, if you're cosplaying. Right. Also, uh, the higher end model gives you the... Uh, options to program everything from the way the lights uh, act and react to what sounds you want it to play. I understand it comes with a bunch of custom NG1 blaster sounds and you can have it on this display just doing nothing or go through a sequence or whatever. I'm, I'm being the geek I am. It'd be awesome to be able to customize that. So that's, that was, that was intriguing to me. Um, uh, before I pass it on to you guys, I just I feel like it's worth my saying. I've been I've been talking about this thing since we mentioned it before. I had no idea it was going to be a Kickstarter uh, when we first brought it up. Uh, I I really want to back this thing up. I've been a I've been a user of Kickstarter since 2012. I've backed almost 20 things. Um, of those, two of them never saw the light of day, and I lost my money, which is about a hundred bucks uh, personally. Uh, everything else has either been funded and and I've received it or I'm waiting for it to be completed to receive it. And uh, I always treat Kickstarters like eBay purchases. Like don't buy something unless you're comfortable with losing that investment and not getting anything at all out of it. That's how I've always looked at it. And, you know, I can I can comfortably do that with this gun, but it would be the most I'd ever lost if it doesn't work out. And I really want this to work out, and I really want to back this, but I need to learn a little bit more about M Deck. Maybe, maybe Daryl knows a little bit more about them than than what's just been written here. I've also we've also recently been sent some contact information for M Deck, which I'm going to follow up on and see if I can get an interview for the show going on. But Daryl, are, are you just as eager to throw down the money for? This? Um, you are not no. a fan. <laughs> <laughs> um this is a really cool project and i i hope it gets funded i'm skeptical i'm gonna say that this is uh this is uh this is far reaching they're 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 kind of they're swinging for the fences um uh with this one this is a big project i'll give them that uh but uh they are they're looking to get a hundred and twenty thousand euros that's that's a spicy meatball uh and uh currently yeah. they have 13 backers third third board I, I see 14 okay um and they have currently reached uh or have pledged almost four thousand euros 21 days to go i want to remain optimistic that this will happen but they are they are really going for it here uh this is this is a very niche item uh, this is niche of niche. If I ever saw something, 
Right. And uh, and they are asking for an obscene amount of money. Yeah. So, so I wish them well. I am not going to back this myself. Plus, I don't have a spot to put a life-size fucking Optimus Prime blaster. But it's it, it's uber cool. It really is. If I had the cash, I would probably do it. But I don't. I don't really have that kind of money to throw down on something like this. I, I'd I'd be interested to see kind of where they came up with the number that they need. It seems like they have none of the tooling done because it, this is the kind of pricing that they need for tooling. As far as M Deck, the company goes, I have never heard of them before in my entire life. There's people. There's a there's a list of creators down at the bottom of the page. Perhaps Yoshi, if you're looking for some to research, you could look up these people and see if they've done anything else that you've heard of. But personally, I, I, I have some concerns that this will actually get funded. Won't get funded. Well, yeah, I use a double negative, but yes. Now, Jeremy, they brought one of these to TF Nation, didn't they? Yeah, we saw some pictures on, there's a TFW thread about it. Right. And I mean, it looks a lot like a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, it, it just, if it happens, it would be amazing. My big concerns are the same as Daryl. There's not a lot of time for them to get the money that they need. And looking at their, their tiers, they go from a you know a generic pledge one euro or more and you get a, a high definition desktop wallpaper image. I mean that that that's perfectly fine, you know, if you want to support the project, but you can't afford it any you know, more than that. You know, you're at least counted. Then the next one is 290 euros. And that yeah. gets you like the first physical you know, gun, in my mind, I would have had more tiers between those different things. And it's, you know, that would entice more people to donate, maybe even have a blaster with no electronics, nothing, you know, just a lot cheaper to produce. Just the, I don't think the electronics are the expensive part though. I think they are. I mean, okay. Otherwise it's just a bunch of, you know, round barrels and I don't know. It's just the sound effects, the lights, those have got to be a lot more expensive than just the plastic. I, I would I would have to agree that there's probably some like to have that electronics chip in there to 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 control all the lights that they want to have done. That's got to cost some money. Well, let's and, let's let's be let's let's talk this out for a second because this is the fucking this is the Betty of the week here. Like you buy a Raspberry Pi and you hook a speaker and some LEDs up to it. Uh, what what is that? Well, Raspberry Pi is thirty bucks, right? Yeah, so right. let's round up and say sixty. I just I don't see the electronics being the expensive component here. I mean, you also I'm looking here. You also get the base and the suitcase. So have a, have a tier without those things. Yeah, that I agree with. The suitcase but, is probably expensive from looking at the picture. I mean, it's yeah. one of those. Foam... I wonder if that has. To, I wonder if they're trying to kill two birds with one stone and shipping though, and making sure it gets to you unbroken. I'm sure they are, but if if you're if you want it, you can. I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I think someone pledging a hundred, 150 for just the gun, no suitcase, no base. I think they would get a lot more people. Also, you look at that case. That's straight up a gun case, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, that's, man, getting, also, that's getting, you know, called in at, at customs, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a, they say it's a military suitcase. You see also people with like expensive cameras using cases like that. Sure. But, I said this. I said this earlier in the week, Daryl, when when it was brought up in our Discord chat that everybody can join for free. Uh, can you imagine the orange plug that they would have to put at the end of this thing? Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> just to get it into the U.S. Plus, oh. this is being targeted towards cosplay people, right? Right. Send it in pieces. Yeah, that that's a good idea. Right? Cosplay. Well, they're doing that are... with that huge uh, ass uh, fucking. Um, Ultra Magnus, not Ultra Magnus, um, Omega Supreme. Okay. Yeah, They're but you're getting that shipped in at different times too. It's like, mm. yeah. Oh. But I mean, if they send it in, in pieces, then it doesn't, you know, it's doesn't, when they scan it at customs, it doesn't scan up looking like a fucking gun. Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, and your target audience is one that would be adept in putting something like this together. Right. Yeah. Just, I mean, there are, there are ways to make this cheaper. But honestly, my, my thought is that they, the a majority of what their 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 pledge that they want to get their goal is for the tooling. I don't think they have the tooling yet. Yeah, I mean everything. I, I would think that the only physical ones they have are prototypes that they've 
kind they've, of 3D printed. Yeah, they've they've three D printed themselves. Yeah. So yeah, I mean they've they're really they're they are shooting for the moon, but they should have done at least a couple months. You know, and you know, use something like TF. I mean, I know they were a TF Nation, but use something like TFCon to bring up more excitement. I don't think. Uh, I don't. These are all valid points, Jeremy. But I, I, for one, I think that's kind of the 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 niche of of Kickstarter is you only get thirty days once you post something. I don't. I don't think there's any projects. I thought there were some that were longer. I'm not aware of any. Uh, neither here nor there. I mean, they didn't have to use Kickstarter either. You know. They could have used another crowdfunding. They could have done done their own thing. They could have done their own mm-hmm. thing. But uh, I don't think this is the last time we're going to talk about this. Uh, like I said, they did reach out to us, so we're going to try and set up an interview, hopefully answer all these questions without creating new ones. Yeah, go from there. I think that's it, Jeremy. Well, let's move on to some rapid fire. Absolutely, positively, definitely. Nobody gets dropping faster than I can. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Uh, in rapid fire this week, I just went through and grabbed some pictures of some stuff that uh, we had missed over the last little while. This is the first topic is XM Studios Premium Collectibles one tenth scale statue of G1 Megatron. Uh, this thing is looks really good, except for the face. Uh, the face is atrocious. We said that when we first saw it. Yeah, it uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, that X Men Age of Apocalypse. Apocalypse, uh, he's got a human looking face on a robot body. It, it looks really, really bad. Fix that face, guys. It doesn't look like they're going to do it though. Next topic. Well, next two topics. We got two from Imaginarium Art. Some more statues. So we've got uh, G One. Uh, really cool. Uh, scene from the 86 movie this is being done by imaginarium art this is grimlock and wheelie fighting shark and this looks really rad um they grimlock is standing on a shark growling at one there's one biting the back of his leg wheelie's standing on top of grimlock firing his slingshot at the at one this is really detailed and then there's one standing off to the side that's in that's transformed into robot mode this is like one, two, three, uh, four. I uh, four Sharktacons I think are in this uh, this uh, this statue. It's really cool. Uh, I like it quite a lot. So if you're into this scene, maybe take a look and, and maybe buy your first statue. This is the Dogcade statue edition. Uh, <laughs> maybe it looks like it's going to be uh, around seventeen hundred dollars at least. Yeah. <laughs> That's all go. right, Dog Cades. It's only <laughs> money. You can't take it with you. Mm-hmm. The uh, the next one we have is some uh, work in progress renders from Imaginarium Art, and it is of G1 Shockwave, and the, he is looking pretty g one Not bad, actually. I think he looks pretty pretty cool. Uh, also, their Imaginarium's got their their stands that they're they're getting really good at using these uh, kind of weird stands that nobody knows if they're going to fit together i think we do know they're not but i think i'm still holding hope that they will um anyway the 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 shockwave statue looks pretty darn good they're still showing it as as work in progress so there's could be some changes here but uh, if you're into imaginary mart there's a shockwave coming for you and last but not least if you were looking for Fans Toys Phoenix, they re-released it this past week. They did a new version, an TF-10X metallic paint limited version. They originally released 1,000 units of this, and it sold out in like a day. So a lot of people really like this figure, and it shows. So another 500 units got released, and as of right now, they are sold out. So, so perhaps another 500 might get get put up. Who knows? Keep on the lookout if you have missed it and are still missing it. Be on the lookout because he is uh, coming back to market, and you might be able to find new versions of him in the uh, in the cons in the future. That's the metallic paint version. He's supposed to be cartoon accurate now. I guess whatever. But uh, it's a great figure. Be on the lookout if you're still looking. 250 bucks, I think, is the, uh, the standing order price right now. 
anyway, that's it for rapid fire. Well, with that, we will move on to trips to the store. And trips to the store is the part of the show that we also do on YouTube and is where we show off everything that we've gotten this week. We include the audio portion in the, the show here, but we would really like you to watch what we have this week. I think we have some really amazing stuff this week that you just, you need to see. So uh, we'll have the link to the YouTube in our show notes. And with that trips to the store. Transmissions wouldn't be what it is today without the awesome support of our listeners. If you'd like to support our shows and enjoy the exclusive benefits that our donors get, please visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Yoshi, what did you get this week? (laughs) You know, uh, I've got nothing new. This last week has been an interesting week. I've spoken to several friends this week, oddly enough, uh, from Alaska, where I used to live. For whatever reason, I was called or calling people, and I've spoke to almost everybody I know in Alaska in this uh, in this short amount of time, which uh, got me to thinking, what should I show on the show this week? And I thought I would show my very first tra- Transformers purchase from Alaska that I bought after I moved there. So I moved there in 2006, and it was several years before I actually purchased a Transformer anything from Alaska. So start guessing, but uh, it's the... Uh, Anniversary release of Optimus Prime with the short stacks, with the sound box, which I'm kind of shocked they didn't go with like the G2 sound box, but with the sound box, and the comic that is a reprint with a slight variant cover because it says uh, 25 on it instead of anything else, instead of barcode or whatever. Um, Daryl, is there a hack for this thing to give it long stacks? No. You, I mean, you could maybe buy some on uh, um, Shapeways. Shapeways, yeah, and, and you know, install them. But uh, it's I don't know, not really. There's a, there's enough of them out there that have long stacks that you could probably just buy one and just swap it out. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So uh, I opened this thing a few years ago before I moved back down to America, just to pull it out and. Uh, razor blade cut the uh the back of the backing for the sound box to take the batteries out so they didn't rust in there or they didn't corrode in there um and just for people who don't know roller is gray on this release where is that there it is man yeah. and it comes with the movie or it comes with uh, a couple episodes on dvd autobot shield clips to your belt or stands on your desk you know what, Jeremy? What? That's all I got. All right. Well, uh, Daryl, how about you? What do you got? I thought I was going last. Oh, fine. You can go last. It's okay. I'll go now. <laughs> Shut up. I'll go girls, now. Girls, 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 quit fighting. Um, I uh, I uh, really don't have a lot either, but I did get a package in the mail this week from uh, direct from IDW. And Jeremy, I, are are we talking about this together? Well, I mean, I, I think there's some differences in what we got. But yes, I, I also got something direct from IDW. Right on. Well, this was from a fan of the show. Donatrion. <laughs> Donatrion. <laughs> um, Mr. Tom B. Long. And, uh, and he sent me a couple comics. So he sent me Transformers Unicron, number one. Three copies of it. So I, We've this is the, same. the same book I, I got three different times. I would like, I think I, the correct response is thank you, Daryl. <laughs> yes. It's... Yes. Thank you, Tom. I can read the book three times over now. Um, no, thank you very much. This is cover a by uh, R I a by Andrew Griffith. This is a really, really cool cover. Um, and uh, then I got uh, cover R I B. This is the, uh, I can't remember how to pronounce this guy's name, Frank, Frank Elio or something like that. Um, Francesco Francavia. Perfect. So I got this one. I and got I got R.I. Cover C by Sarah Peter de Roche. This is the, this is the piece de resistance. This is this the is, cover I really wanted. Mm-hmm, this is a nice one. 
Although the Andrew Griffith cover is pretty kick-ass, yeah. too. So it's kind of nice, Yoshi. You had the original cover on, and we have the homage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the most recent homage. Yes, yeah, the most recent one. <laughs> um, we <clears throat> Now, Jeremy, I believe we also got some original art from Mr. Tom B. Long. We did. Now, since his art is digital, um, I think he just made prints of it, but yeah. it's pretty cool. Uh, this is the... Uh, the Donatrion trilogy from his uh, comic book nobody comic strip, and uh, it's fantastic, where uh, where he basically talks about Donatrions and donor being not being a word. Um, don- donators. Donators, right? Um, so, so there's the first one. There's the second one where uh, donators gets a uh, gets nudity. Um, yeah. and, uh, it's fantastic. And then the best one is the last one where Charles makes an appearance. It's fantastic. So, I like that. Charles says donator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. It's like a double slam. Well, yeah. It, and it's Chuck. Podcast yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. This this is awesome. This was a nice surprise. I also got a couple of cards. Um, Me too. This yeah. is from Star Wars Adventures, Tales from Vader's Castle. It's mm-hmm. not Transformers. Cards number one and five. Hey. That's exactly the same ones I got. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. One has Hera and Kanan from Star Wars Rebels. And five has um, basically just Darth Vader and his castle so far. Yeah. I so, want to mention, I also did get... Awesome. One other thing from in my package, um, he had posted oh, yeah. an an image. Special. I got I got the special one. He posted an image of uh, of a troll, a trolling image that he mentioned to Yoshi. No, um, God. but uh, but I mentioned that it was fucking awesome and I wanted it, and uh, he sent it to me. So he made a special blank variant cover for the upcoming Lost Light Unicron number. Tw- uh 25 and uh he, this is it so this is yoshi's special blank cover um well it's a cover <laughs> i wouldn't call it blank daryl <laughs> yeah. <are> blank <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit of there's a little bit of space down here you know the funny thing is up here is i up here i him weekly bitching about the new blank books that come out. And it's like he took the opposite of everything I've ever said. Can you say that again? Yeah. I have been messaging uh, Tom directly every week about the different blank covers coming out, and I bitch at him about everything that's wrong with them. And it's like this is the exact opposite of everything I've ever spoken about. Mm -hmm. Except it has Donator on there. Yes. That's... (laughs) And he he wrote that in there. That's not yeah, part of the print. He actually wrote that in, on there. Unicron so saying, "Become a did, donator." He actually did the sketch cover. That's right. It, it, it is a, a, a Tom Belong sketch cover. It's yeah. so much horse shit that you got that and I didn't. I'm just I'm telling you right now. As much as he and I talk about blank variants, it is absolute horse shit that you got. I, I asked for it, um, but. Uh, Yes, if you're wondering out so, there, yes, this is Lost Light number 25, and oh my god. No, it's not. It's Lost Light 23, it's not 25. Um, they just, uh, he put a, a piece of uh, blank paper, the printout, over top of the cover of 23. So, no, I did not get an advanced copy of 25. It would be fucking cool, but I didn't. Um, so, no, this is really cool. I'm really happy to have it. Um, I know there's a couple... Uh, people out there that collect like weird variant covers that are all kind of you know you know odd this is one of them mm-hmm. and it's a one on one there's no no yeah. others suck it so when <laughs> when you do have super dire financial straits that's right i did have i do have one toy that i'll mention uh uh this is uh this is armada thundercracker i was able to find um, so it goes along with my Armada Starscream. I don't have the the little dude for him, the little, little uh, mini con that goes with him. I have seen him recently, and I gotta try and remember where I saw him because 
I want to complete them, so I need the little mini con for this. But now that I've got Armada Starscream and Armada Thundercracker, I need to get an Armada Skywarp and complete the Seekers. Um, this is something that's going to kind of eat in my brain until it gets, uh, you know, satisfied. So, but it's cool. I like them. It, the sound effects work. Yeah, and it's uh, missiles are all there, so it's cool. It's a good figure. I like the mold. It's just a fun, a fun looking mold. Um, it's backpack kibbliness is is kind of weird, but from the front he looks cool. So, yeah. Anyway, that's what I got this week, guys. Right, Jeremy, well, what what'd you get? Well, I mean, outside of all the comic stuff, I'm going to show one more thing. This is what we sent out to our donatrions. Uh, we have a, a level, the five dollar level is kind of the, the goodie bag level. So that level and higher, we will occasionally send out stuff. And this time, we made these lanyards, and I, I have actually just put some pins on mine. Cause, um, we sent them out with a little um, thing to hold cards. But this is just a, it's a lanyard with our podcast name on it. Perfect for wearing at TFCon and you know finding other listeners. So. In the U.S., you should have it by now. If you're international, still working on that. I'm sorry. It's I haven't gotten mine stuff. yet. Yours is going to be hand delivered. Would you be wear on it? Thursday? Is that going to be on Thursday? It's be on Ed? Thursday, yeah. Because you and I are hooking up to hang out. Yeah, yeah. It's too bad none of the other guys are showing up. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> Would you even wear it, Yoshi? It says transmissions on it. I mean. <laughs> Fuck you. No, I won't. <laughs> I think you'd wear it just because it won't have TFCon on it. So, but anyway, th this is something we, we sent out and um, we, you know, we, we love everyone that supports us and we like to be able to give back. So we're still working on um, some other things we want to do. So anyway, just stay tuned. And also, I would like to mention that we do have an online store where you can buy merch. Uh, this is by Spreadshirt, and we have a few new shirt designs and stuff up there. So if you're getting cold and you need a shirt to wear, why not wear one of ours? Just as good as any. That's a pitch. <laughs> I know. So uh, with that, we will bring this to a close. Uh, and we're back from trips to the store. And now for some quick convention news. TFCon has announced their Toronto dates for next year. Uh, TFCon Toronto 2019 will be July 12th through the 14th. Oddly, this year it is missing both my kids' and my kids' birthday and my anniversary, so I might be able to go. Yay! I don't know. We'll have to see. Oh, <laughs> it's still a year out. So I'm wondering if the picture of Hot Rod means anything. I doubt it. But <laughs> Dick Goche uh, is dead. So Judd Judd Nelson, <laughs> yeah, he was in the the awesome Power of the Primes. He certainly was. But anyway, uh, it'll be at the same place, Hilton Mississauga Meadowvale, and you know more information will be coming. I would think probably after TFCon Chicago is done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, this is just a nitpick, but why can't they announce this after Chicago? Like, why do they have to do it that early? I think they have a schedule that they go on where like they did the same thing with Chicago. Yeah. And it's just, they have their schedule that they work from. Okay. I mean, it would be neat to see like at the very end of TFCon Chicago, they make a big deal about announcing the next, all the stuff for Toronto for the next time and do the same thing. Just kind of have one build on the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that is all the convention news we got this week. So let's finish up the show with some feedback. That's right. And if you would like to leave us feedback here on Transmissions, just visit us at transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback. There you have multiple ways to get a hold of us. Email, social media, voicemail. We would love to hear your sexy voice. Don't be shy. We're sure not. But uh, we're a little light on feedback this week, so we're going to try throwing to our Discord chat to see if anybody has any cues for us to A them with. So, everybody in chat, what's your questions for us? Question number one from Third Sergio. How are you doing? Got a little rash, Sergio, but other than that, I'm good. I'm looking forward to Charles coming back. That's how I'm doing. <laughs> 
He's not coming back. He's found another podcast. Oh, he, he has a secret German podcast. Yeah. Here they come. Walking down the street. What's that dog? Cage? Oh, yeah, right. Daryl, why do you sound like you've been hanging out with deep throating? Oh, I hurt my voice during the week. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> dog Cage asks, what's your favorite Transformer figure? Mine's Leader One. Jeremy? Uh, all time, probably Soundwave. Daryl? Uh, G1 Jetfire. All right. You want to answer it seriously or no? Seriously, it's Optimus Prime. I could go to the grave with just that one figure. I'd be happy. Cool. Uh, third Sergio asks, what sort of battle damage would get you to buy a siege toy? Good, I guess. I don't know. I would say physical battle damage where, like, pieces could come off. Ooh, like the crash test dummies back in, dumb, dummies back in the day. Yeah, so, I mean, just... You know, if you want it to look pristine, it can look pristine. But if you wanted to, like, remove some pieces to look like he's seen some shit, there you go. I like that. That's a good idea. Or replacement pieces that have seen some shit, eh? Yeah. I mean, ha- have, like, a an arm that ends at the elbow. Yeah. You can't go wrong giving people options, but I feel like the base needs to be solid. Undamaged looking. Uh, Quattro asks, if you could make one obscure character the next Takara masterpiece, what character would you pick, Daryl? Oh, shit. Jeez. Uh, obscure? Well, um, let's go with, uh, hmm, that's a good question. Let's go with, uh, uh, Run Amok, because you got to repaint in, in, uh, Runabout. Right. Jeremy? Uh, I think it, it's kind of easy for me. Okay. Scrounge. We Ooh. need a masterpiece scrounge. <laughs> He's mm-hmm. got a special arm. I'm thinking still. That's why I went last. <laughs> Jake Dalrymple. That would be funny if they came out with like a, a six inch fucking Jake Dalrymple. Obscure though. We've made Jake unobscure. You know what? Give me <laughs> oh god. Give me give me a masterpiece Crimzeek. <laughs> we'll do that. I hated that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh we're gonna thank you all for your questions and hope mike can make something useful out of that and uh, again if you guys would like to leave us feedback just hit us up at transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback you have all kinds of convenient ways to let us know how you care what your questions are uh so do that because we didn't get to hear from anybody this week and and we miss everybody jeremy that's it all right. Well, uh, thanks again for listening to the show. And uh, I would like to remind you about our contest that we have going on for just all of our Donatrions. If you support the show via Patreon or PayPal, you are entered. And also the special offer we have on Patreon, where if you um, you join or if you're already at the $10 level on September 30th, when the next billing cycle hits, we will give you these exclusive five pins of, of each of the hosts and the awesome editor, Mike, who I'm sure we're putting through some crap this week. And then also just remember, subscribe to us on wherever podcasts are, are found. We are on, um, we're on Apple podcasts, Google podcast. We're on the internet. You can find yes. us. Uh, and I think that that is about it. So thanks everyone for for listening and we will talk to you next time bye bye later thanks for listening to transmissions remember you can help support the show by donating to us directly via patreon or paypal once you become a donor you will receive access to donor only goodies like donor only contests listening to us record transmissions live and getting transmission swag at 20 percent off you can find links for this at transmissionspodcast.com slash support Subscribing to us on Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play is also a great way to support us here at Transmissions. Every subscription we get helps us get better noticed on those services. Leaving us a comment and five-star review doesn't hurt either. Be sure to come chat with us on Discord. You will find a link for Discord at transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. And of course, you can always send us an email at feedback at transmissionspodcast.com. 
Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. God damn. Go to hell, you <laughs> bitch. There we go. All right. Recording. Yay. All right. Oh, boy. Got my backups going. Maximum effort. If you do backups, I'm going to do backups. Everybody will do backups. It'll be anarchy. We'll all and have backups. Yeah. <laughs> Kermit what, waving hands. What could go wrong? We'll have the greatest backups in the world. We'll have better <laughs> backups than we will. Whoever is uh, doing these backups insists on renaming Amominus. And, uh, That's, that was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's fucking... You're, your president can't say of the fucking word anonymous. All right, all right. We're not a political show. Let's get on. I know that mostly the room is filled with Canadians and they support Trump, but we're not a political show. So oh, we fucking on. love Trump for the comedy only. God, you're really quick to jump ship, DJ Ronan. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that knew that once Charles left for Germany, all the Ollies would, would get. Yeah. It's all right. You got the nervousness. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> we really need to have a written script for this. <laughs> mm. Got some bandwidth you want to use up, eh? Yeah, I mean, with, with my, my... Bandwidth is only as good as your operating system. The fuck? We're waiting on you, bitch. I gotta, I gotta get out of here because my bandwidth is not as fucking awesome as Jeremy, so I'll see you guys at Skype. God damn it, Craig. <laughs> and we're back from our trips to the store, and now it's time to end the show with some feedback. Didn't we have a one convention news item? Did we? Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh, sorry. Let me start that. God, over. Charles, you suck.